the Bills. You need all that and some more goddamn questions. Got some paint skis that came in, but I'm going to do those seconds. Uh, made it by the skin of your ass, too. I had no goddamn paint skis for the day, and three came in right before I hit record on this. I always check my inbox just in case, uh, and I print them out. So, awesome fucking there. But I'm doing something a little different today. Um, got an email here, and I'm like, fuck this. I'm not replying to this goddamn thing, uh, typing all this out. Read it. I, I skimmed it, so I got the gist of what he's talking about. We're talking about, we're talking about attic, and we're talking about goddamn punch and stench and cataclysm. <laughs> That's the brief of it. This email's from Kevin, and I'm doing it because uh, we correspond a little bit, and uh, his email's long as fuck, so I wasn't going to read this whole goddamn thing. And It's goddamn fucking uh, Toonski Talk. Toonski Talk's the goddamn channel. Um, instead of replying and typing all this shit out and reading it out, I was like, I'll read it on the goddamn channel. I replied over here, and I'm just going to reply back to this email and say, replied on, the, replied on video, brah, brah. But uh, Kevin gets this treatment because he orders every fucking week, literally every goddamn week. Not going to say his last name just in case uh, he doesn't want it. Some people don't want their uh, name shouted out. But hey, well, the one Kevin in the world, goddamn it. So if you don't want your name at all shouted out, then tough. It'll be goddamn Kevin McAllister, motherfucker. So the last name said. Anyways, he said, uh, I ended off, he, what was he initially asking about? He was talking about my fest. Uh, but he doesn't really go to shows. And I said, yeah, but dude, you should come up and see at least Attic. The fucking love. I was like, I love that band. It's like my uh, second show in the USA. And he said this. He said, laugh out loud, watch two of two of your videos this morning. The latest one from today and Maniac Neil. I don't remember what today's was about. I didn't, go, I didn't even peek in the comments yet. And we're at fucking almost 3 p.m. here. And Maniac Neil won uh, because after the latest one was over, it was it just went to that ma manic one. I'm not sure what the fuck about that. was only on YouTube to look up Attic, see if I heard them before. And yeah, I have, but forgot forgot about them. <sighs> I forget about that greatness, brah, brah. But yes, I do know what you're talking about as far as forgetting about bands. Uh, because they are like a Judas Priest slash King Diamond. Mm, yeah, I would say, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. I would say more so a uh, King Diamond slash Priest slash Dissection. Uh, yeah, I'd say mostly that covers it, right? Yeah, I would say that that's probably the three biggest fucking things you can hear in it. So I guess my best way to describe comparisons, well, beefed up a bit. You've done a hell of a bit, bro, bro. from those two, and there have been a, there have been quite a few bands past ten years just like that. <laughs> like who, bro, bro? Who's got vocals that sound just like the goddamn King, like Anna does? I can't think of one, not one. And you best believe not come over here and say goddamn uh, ghost. I'm fucking goddamn checking out if you have to say can you come back with that shit take. In fact, it's now a trend for bands to sound like this. Ooh, I, I don't know of any. Again, yes, there's bands that try to sound like Merciful Fate or Priest and shit like that, but it's, it, it's, it's it's primarily the vocals that stand out. And a lot of it's uh, uh, the bands that we're trying to do. It just seems like they're kind of like boring riffs. Granted, okay, that's that's in the ear beholder. I could give you that. Some people that like In Solitude, Portrait. I just thought those bands, the songs that I heard, to their defense, I only listened to the first album by both bands. Maybe they got better. But I, I just thought it was boring. I specifically listened to Portrait. I'm like, oh, this probably sounds like Fatal Portrait type stuff. Just like the band Horrified. I listened to it. I was like, oh, probably sounds like Repulsion Horrified. That sounded absolutely nothing like goddamn Repulsion Horrified. But I just went in there thinking that. Portrait, I'm like, okay, yeah, you can hear the King Diamond influence. I was like, these songs are just boring. And the vocals goddamn blow. Had didn't listen to the second one up, so can't vouch for those. Maybe they're the goddamn greatest things since sliced bread. I doubt it, but it's possible, I guess. Uh, though Attic and a few others were doing it before the current trend of it. Uh, yes, they were. But brought on from the success of bands like Portrait, Dude, they smoke portrait, though. That's, 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 I already knew that was coming. And their first two albums is example. I like Judas Judas and King, but I can only listen to so much comparisons of them. That's why I wasn't sure if heard them or not before. But again, yeah, like, but dude, who, who do you know that the vocals suck? Because prior to Attic, I've always have said in early years, because this is a K KD Mercil Fate super fan. It's a little goddamn fun fact for you. For years, if you were to ask the dog who's his favorite band, I always said, Merciful Fate slash King Diamond, or specifically Merciful Fate over King Diamond. I changed my stance to Cannibal probably around age 28 or so. And the reason I did is because I added up. I'm like, look, 
I like every single album. It's the band that changed my life more. Um, I listen to them as equally as, as Fate and King Diamond. Um, King Diamond would have more songs that I kind of didn't like, although I like every album. But again, like on Abigail to Revenge, there's some songs I'm like, Mommy, That Stinks, uh, So Sad, and, and Christmas on Puppet Master. Those blow chunks. I'm wrong, but those both albums have good songs. Like uh, Magic on Puppet Master, or Blood to Walk, uh, Blue Eyes. Those are good songs. Uh, they are. But I mean, it's got some stinkers on there. Um, and uh, the last album, Give Me Your Soul, has got a couple stinkers too. Cannibal doesn't have any stinkers. My least favorite Cannibal song, I've said it and people give me shit over this, is Priest of Sodom. I don't know. It's just a song kind of, yeah. And then they do have some filler songs on Kill and Evisceration Play, primarily those. You know, like five nails to the neck. It's not like super strong. It's it's, it's okay, but, but they're not. They're, but it's the same formula. Those songs stink. Like I think King, King has a few songs that stink. Um, Merciful Fate, uh, Into the Unknown, Dead Time, song fucking blows. It's called like it is. Um, Into the Unknown, Surfer, Wanky shit at the, in the midway through, fucking blows. Starts off strong, fades off with that fucking. What is this, bro? Bro, cut that out. So I kind of changed my stance. Cannibals, by my favorite fucking band of all time uh because it hits all the check boxes you want to talk that nerd shit looking like it's kind of what this channel's about right uh that's what you guys want to talk about but for years and years i always said merciful fate and king diamond are my all-time favorite bands so i was following it hard like super super fan i owe more goddamn boot re recordings than you can shake a motherfucking stick at i got more goddamn pics of the goddamn king from magazines people taking photos from shows than, than you've ever fucking seen bro i got more than your mom has of you so Super, super fan, right? So, I and I, I always said, I was like, name me one other person, one, one other band where the vocals sound like King Diamond. I was like, there's nobody, literally fucking nobody, until Attic put out their first album. Well, technically their demo, but I didn't hear it on the demo. I heard um, them when the first album was out, uh, it was either 2012 or 2013. Uh, got it from Van Records, listened to it, fucking loved it, absolutely loved it, and, uh, you crazy, like, God damn, that's fucking guy sounds like King Diamond. Like, like literally sounds like King Diamond. <laughs> um, but, but who, who else? Who else is like that? But nobody. But that, and that's a that's a huge part because let's call it like it is, dude. Merciful Fate and King Diamond. Those bands cannot carry on without them. And if it does, that is the biggest shit show goddamn joke of all time. He is the iconic reason for that band. The voice and with Merciful Fate, the satanic lyrics starting off when they did in the 80s. Who were the two leaders of satanic music early on? From? It was Venom and Merciful Fate. And then basically when Slayer came along in 83, Venom and Fate were, before, were prior to both things. And King was the one carrying the goddamn, carrying the whole goddamn fucking uh, everything on his shoulders for Fate. I mean, who, who else do you think it was? Michael Denner and his fucking cheetah pants? What was that fool fucking thinking? Hank Sherman, he did, went on to go do Fate. Dude, that's the gayest shit I've ever fucking heard. You ever get to listen to that fucking later Fate stuff? So you like the band Fate. <laughs> Check it out if you're fucking curious what uh, King Diamond went on to go do. You know, King Diamond, you know, hence No Presents for Christmas and Fatal Portrait and shit like that. Go look what Hanky Boy decided to go fucking do. Who do you think? So the sat Satanism, the image, the voice, it was all King Diamond, dude. It's all him. And now we finally have one of the band. I mean, again, unless the second portrait, it seems like, I, I didn't think, I didn't hear, first one I heard, I was bored goddamn stiff. That's all I got to fucking say. So yeah, you pick me up one other goddamn that sounds like Attic. Not one, bro, bro. But yes, as far as playing heavy metal style music that's influenced by Fate, Diamond, and, and Priest, and yeah, I'm not saying they're the only ones doing that. No, I'm, I'm definitely not saying that. I do think their songwriting smokes all these other fucking fools, though I will say that. Fucking portrait of goddamn in solitude. Ain't, ain't got shit on the fucking song uh, Sonata Surrenda alone. So, all right, Kevin, fucking check it out so far. Uh, where, where, where the fuck I leave off of this goddamn essay? Uh, I, I like Judas and King, but I can only listen to so much comparison to this. Was it before? I have not, but nothing recent. Funeral in the Woods, I have, but they have more recent stuff than that album. Um, well, first of all, it's not Funeral in the Woods. That's one of those songs. Um, Invocation is their first album. Sanctimonious is their second album. And Sanctimonious is a better album, in my opinion. And I think I said it on camera. Maybe it was off camera. I told the band in my interview, or maybe it was off camera. When I when the, when Sanctimonious came out, I was definitely excited for it. But I, I before I even put on the player, I'm like, it's probably going to be good. I'm like, there's no way they're beating that first record. 
put it on, I'm like, fuck, I think I'd like this even more. Um, specifically songs, Serpent in the, well, actually, specifically the opening song, the self-titled, Sanctimonious, Serpent in the Pulpit's probably my favorite, on Choir Stalls, and um, There Is No God, on our goddamn face, in case you happen to goddamn give a fuck. And then, fast forward to this goddamn shit-ass year, they put out the new album. Same thing. I, it, I might like this one the most. I might. I think the weakest song on the album is Darkest Rice. Darkest Rights, which is the opening song. They did the 12 inch of Actually, no, it's a good song. It's just some songs got to be first, some songs got to be last. Um, I think they think that's their, their best song or whatever they chose. Well, I, I don't think so at all. I think Sonata Surrender is the best song. After that, it's probably like Offerings of Balorith and Baleful Baron. Turn of the Witchfinder. It's, it's, it's probably those. Yeah, I'd say they're probably, they're probably about that order. Um, so don't sleep on that new album. It's 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 just as good as Sanctimonious, but it might even have a beat. It's probably it's it's duking it out, clubber laying and rocky. Goddamn, he's got him on the ropes. Damn straight got him on the fucking ropes. Uh, anyways, latest video talked about Punch and Stench. Well, what Wink never did vocals for PS. Oh yeah, he was, he was drummer. I thought I thought he did backing vocals. They, they, I thought it was a dual vocal guy. Whatever, my bad. He was he was drummer. Martin did all the vocals, guitars, and has done. Punch and Stunts under two different names for live shows using uh, other members. First was under Church of Punch and Stench. Never heard of that. What the fuck did he do that? And later is Shrenic Plays Punch and Stench. Oh, because that is him. That's what, okay, so at least it's him. Yeah, the vocals. And again, honestly, prior to Punch and Stench, there was disastrous murder stuff. Nobody really kind of had those kind of vocal tones, too. You know what I mean? But granted, that was a little unfair because that's in the very beginning. Nowadays, yeah, you hear some more stuff. But nonetheless, I don't want some guy going up there singing like fucking Ross Dolan. He has nothing, doesn't sound like punching what's so, what's so fucking ever. And I also don't want to play anything in Club Mondo up. Haven't heard anything after Club Mondo, but god damn, I remember that Club Mondo album being unfucking listenable. First two are great. I mean, Ben Caught Buttering is, is I like the album quite a bit, but you can tell it's the beginning of the end. Uh, the first album, dude, give uh, God, your soul for me, your flesh. That's go to this goddamn fuck. You don't know that. We don't listen to the same kind of music. I don't fucking tell you. Dog brushes his motherfucking teeth to that. Uh, both of which Alex Wings has sued over and lost. Uh, about that, he threatened to sue us, too, for carrying a fucking ten copies of a bootleg years ago. Sounds like a wank. I know Martin years back, as well as his ex-wife, who was actually from Texas. Shit, you know, god damn, you know his whole little motherfucking life history. Meet them yet. Met them years ago. She helped me with Java, JavaScript on my website when did my first label, and I did a massive interview with Martin on PS. Oh, I'm not spilling any beans here. I'm not supposed to talk about Bravo, but hey, that's on you, dude. All right, I'll, I'll get it to you to read on camera. Uh, fair enough. It's a good scuttlebutt for the goddamn scene, then, I guess. And all his other projects. They used to do the website for Napalm Records years ago. She is web developer, and he does graphic art. The truth is, Punch and Stench has been in turmoil since the 90s. It was in turmoil since that dog shit fucking Clamondo album, blah, blah. I will say this, though. We carried it. I was almost tempted to put it on. The Amputee album, I thought the band photos and shit were cool. Where they uh, photoshopped it or whatever. They're all missing limbs and stuff. I thought the whole idea of that and the concept kind of had a uh, Punch and Stench feel where they're outside the norm. They had that gross, just... You know, just like, let me just look at Ben Cog Quittering, dude. The cover's just gross. The feel of the album's gross. Um, the lyrics, everything. But in a different sense than the typical, you know, chop them up, fuck their goddamn dead bodies. Um, so it did have that feeling, and I liked the photos. I'll give them that. But So I thought about putting it on, like, nah, probably sucks. Maybe don't, though. Uh, before they ever broke up, first time. The original three guys just don't get along, and Wink is always money-hungry. It lines up to where he tried to sue, sue us. I told him to get fucked and suck a fucking dick. That is the root of uh, most of it. Eh, money talks, bullshit walks. Money, it's it's dumb, but it ha happens, of course. Yep, it's the uh, main leading cause of all, well, second leading cause of all relationship breaking up. Infidelity and goddamn uh, money. The other original member, Pitbull, Pitbull Jack Bass, quit, quit playing. Music when Punch and Stench first broke up in the 90s, but he rejoined Martin to play Shrenic, plays Punch and Stench, and is still playing with him currently. 
The issues of Punch Stents is between Martin and Wink. They don't get along, but Punch Stents is one of those bands. It doesn't work with those, without those two. I can see that. And when they finally agree to do stuff again, Masters of Moral and Amputee are great albums. Oh, are they? Hmm. Bear that in mind. But are they are they similar to the first two? Um, or is it a totally different band? Nothing out there nothing out there really like them, really. I don't know, bro, bro. You're fucking saying other guys sound just like goddamn Attic. I don't know about that. Definitely not vocally. Musically, maybe. Definitely not vocally. Uh, out there, really like them. Just is no other bands like Punch and Stench. Oh, there definitely wasn't. Yeah, well, just Masters of Murmur. Uh, or as good when they when they get along. Seen Punch and Stench, their first U.S. tour. Oh, goddamn devil. Seen them that tour 4X. It was awesome. They were great live. They were great live back then. Pure energy. I, I believe that too, yes. Haven't seen them since. Heard people say that Shrenic plays Punch and Stench is pretty good. But in my opinion, without those original three guys, it's still, like you said, a tribute band. Yes, that's true. And again, I, I, it almost saddens me to say that a little bit. I don't want to say that because the guys carrying it out, you know, whether it be the one-man bands, uh, member bands, uh, they, if they still want to do it, they have the passion they drive, and all the other guys fell off because they're burn out, they're dead or in jail, or just complete fucking knobs, which it sounds like Wink is. Um, it, it's it kind of sucks, but it's but as a fan, it's like, well, it fucking sucks for me as a fan. I wanted to see, I wanted to see the band. I didn't want to see a goddamn cover band. Um, but I get it on both sides. It is what it is, right? What can you do? Was coming from a guy who experienced the original band. I grew up with those albums. Many people have different opinions who never did. Uh, I agree. He says, and laugh out loud, cataclysm thing. Another good example that that band died with the original singer party. He got that right. He made me vocals, but he made me vocals. What does that mean? But he made the band, that band, what they were. Anything with after those f first three albums with him is garbage. Yep, yep, yep. No goddamn facts. I do a goddamn paid ski in this review. And Mighty fine review, I must say so myself, from Noah Bigwitter. Sent a hundred goddamn USD. My kind of homie. Paid review. Hello, Justin. I'm donating this 150 Canadian. So that's what currency translates in, huh? So he's up in, up in goddamn Canada. It hopes you will check out my band's unreleased new demo. Listen to it twice, brah, brah. Dug it big time. We are currently looking for a label to release our new album, of which these songs are part of. We have 12 songs recorded, and this is four of those 12 songs with a very rough mix done by us. Let's keep the mix just like that, man. That's part of what it makes it. Um, the band is called FPG Fist Pounding Ghouls. Yeah, we'll get to that in a goddamn second. Dog digs it, though. Ah, I like it. From Canada. So watch out for Fist Pounding Ghouls, devils. Dog approved. Uh, I am curious to see what you think of it. I think if you take the time to listen, you might enjoy what we have here. It was probably my favorite, favorite paint, paint ski to date, bro, bro. Uh, that and that Demonian. Demonian? <laughs> that is in some goddamn CD. Good fucking shit. That, Lord Humongous, Alice Divine, uh, the, 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 the Christian band that sounded like Deicide, but I can't remember the goddamn name. Those like I actually like enjoyed enjoyed. I'm like, oh shit, this is a good idea. Yeah, like, like something I would buy. Like this is something I this this I would buy. These four songs you sent me, if that was a demo, especially if it was on a seven inch, three hundred hand numbered limited seven inches. These four songs, like I would physically pull out the wall and buy it. Please check it out and get back to me once you get get the chance. Thanks a lot. We have emailed you the demo separately. Oh, yeah, we did, Rob Brown. I'm pulling this up and I'm yelling these songs out to you. God damn it. Uh, fuck this goddamn shit. Out. Here we fucking go. So he sent me four songs, Black Coffin, Frozen Bones, Rock and Roll, Were Rock and Roll Werewolf, which was like kind of like, I don't want to call it a ballad, but kind of a ballad. <laughs> that was actually my favorite goddamn song. And uh, Suck Out My Blood, that was my second favorite song. Was the last song on here he gave me. Gave me a little bit of a sucking your blood feeling off Merciful Fate Dead Again. Could be just the uh, don't, don't take that out of context. As far as uh, the kind of music it is, dude, it's like, it's funny because actually I generally, like, and I've said it before, I'm not too big into bands like this that, uh, uh, the originals are in, obviously, uh, that, that try to 
you know, that, that, that's influenced by that they come out because there's so many of them. I'm like, oh, this, this again. But definitely uh, early Venom, Warfare, and uh, a pinch of fucking Bathory feeling. But by, it could be because of the recording. And that's why I said a very rough mix. So, for example, like bands like Midnight, Bewitcher, who I do like those ones as well. They're that style as well. A little bit more speed, I would say, thrown in there by those bands. But uh, they have more of a modern recording. My suggestion to you is keep the recording you have just like this. Like, like don't polish it up too much. I mean, there's a few things you just got to add. Like, for example, when the first song uh, comes in, I notice, like, the uh, guitars only come out of one goddamn speaker. Um, I mean, it was in my headphone. It only came out one, but it's for the first three seconds. So if it's little things like that that need to be fixed, fine. But that's your recording. It should sound like this because it literally sounds like 83, 84. At the time when, like, At War With Satan and shit came out. It has that sound slash feeling. Bewitcher does not. Midnight does not. Yes, it's playing that style, but it does not have that, just that kind of, like, 80s grit um, of the actual recording. So keep that. The song's fucking jammed. I can't speak for the other eight. You said there's 12. I'm, I'm assuming you sent me the best four. <laughs> so maybe the others are, are, are mid as fuck. But I thought these four songs were very, very good. Uh, I sent it over to Easy and Sea Dog. Don't, don't get a boner yet. I mean, uh, Easy E, he didn't reply, which is zero shock. I get no goddamn replies from that guy on anything. But Sea um, Dog replied, his uh, reply was, uh, ain't nobody taking that name seriously. Little cable guy. So, what do you guys say? <laughs> Does that mean don't do it? Does it mean not? As I said, yeah, I'm up for it. I mean, if we sign it, we sign it. We don't, we don't. I mean, I'm not like, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm cool with signing it because I definitely dug it. Um, regardless, if we don't, I, it's something I would pick up. Uh, it's something I recommend. This Pony Ghouls. I like the name personally. I thought that's, I, maybe that's what he's just responding to because I said that. I, was, I think the name's fucking cool. Uh, he obviously thought otherwise. Um, <laughs> In common all the tunes, so I don't fucking know, man. Um, whatever the fuck that means. So definitely don't get your goddamn hopes up on that. I, all tried, but you know, <laughs> there's only one guy and he gets kicked around like a goddamn tomato can around here. So um, yeah, highly recommend it. When uh, whether it comes out by Hell's, which it sounds like probably not, <laughs> based on that seed dollar fly, um, or any other label or self released fist pounding goals. In the meantime, fist pounding, what I would recommend, if nothing else. If you don't hear back from me on anything else, um, I would do, my method would be, uh, I mean, you already did the fucking uh, paid review. You already got a go-getter out there. Do something cheap, man. The CDRs, the pro CDRs, something printed to where, just do these four songs like that, a teaser. Call it your demo. And uh, press up a thousand or so, hand them the fuck out. Send as many as you want to hells, I'll hand them out to orders. Orders that fucking matter. People that actually buy merchandise, I'm going to keep one for sure. I mean, more Dan Red did that. I'll hand them out in orders that are worthy goddamn orders. Like people, they buy, you know, even 50 plus, if it, you know, it's a, any decent size, big boy orders for sure. They'll get it. Uh, people that actually buy merchandise and, you know, they're they're very likely to listen to it. So that'll help spread the goddamn name. You hand them out to show, at shows. Uh, then I would, I, would, I would recommend hitting up guys like uh, Nuclear War Now, uh, Dark Descents, see if uh, Patrick over at Iron Bonehead. Ask them the same thing. Hey, bro, I want to send you a box of whatever, 50 to 100 free CDs, hand out in orders. Is that cool? Only reply to me, yes, if you will legitimately hand them out. If you're going to throw them in the goddamn dumpster, then, 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 then that, don't, don't waste my time and my money, please. But if it's, oh, why, how's that better for us? Because well, you're giving a free item in a goddamn order. People like free shit in their orders. And if it's the band by fist pounding ghouls, by advertising the goddamn band, sending it to people that actually buy mental merchandise still. So it's a, a, a win for the band, and it's a win for the label, the, uh, Distro, sending them out because you're handing it, you're giving your customers free shit. Customers always like free shit, especially if they, they spin this jam. They're like, oh, fuck, this is a killer-ass fucking free disc. I'm looking into this goddamn band. Uh, get that shit up on Metal Archives, ASA fucking P. Uh, Bandcamp, too, as much as I hate that goddamn uh, hipster-ass goddamn fucking modern, just, just fucking not a fan of it, goddamn it. Just say that. Um but nonetheless, it's, it is what it is. It's kind of what part of the scene and what people I, uh, check out bands and music on. So I would get it up on goddamn Bandcamp, uh, ASAP, and Metal Archives because uh, it's just shit. Uh, nothing else. Right after this goddamn video, people have something to look up. And people have the retention span and memory of this, of uh, people today, especially the youngins, 
is like 30 goddamn seconds. So you don't want them goddamn forgetting. So I would get on that pronto, bra bra. That's my goddamn review. Comes with search. You'll do. But the Godbox guarantees a warning. Later, goddamn it.